Hi there guys, today we're going to be talking about auxiliary views and how we're going to be using those auxiliary views to uh, draw our um, final 3D shape. In this case here we have a prism to draw and we're going to just go through the actual instruction. It says draw the center lines for the auxiliary view first. Use the auxiliary view given to draw an isometric prism using corner A as your lowest point. The point A has already been provided for, for you and it is also seen in the isometric view so please remember to include all necessary center lines. Alright, so we have the bottom corner over here labeled A which is our 2D shape, our auxiliary view and we have our A for our isometric view over here that we're going to start off with. Right, so please remember that your auxiliary view will contain all your measurements needed and any me measurements needed to take from the auxiliary view and plot on the isometric view um, will be needed to um, be calculated on your auxiliary view. Right, so let's get a start. We're going to start with A and I'd like to go and label each one of my corners appropriately. This one here I'm going to call B. This one here I'm going to call C. And this one here I'm going to call D. Okay, reason for this is if I'm standing at A and I'm looking to the right, I will see D, which means if I see A on this side here and I look to the right, I will have to see D. Same as B, if I stand at A, given, and I look to the left, I will see B. When I go across to my 3D shape, when I stand at A and I look to my left, I will see B on the left. All right. First things first, you have to go and draw your block. Remember, this is not a square. This is a simple box that is touching each one of your corners. You'll note that the diameter given over here is 60 and the diameter over here is 51.96, which means they are not the same, which means this is not a square. We will be using these dimensions, not diameters, sorry, but dimensions, um, to plot our existing box in uh, as our as our 3D shape takes shape. Right, so I'm going to go from A to B, which measures 60 millimeters at 30 degrees. Right, let's do A to D rather, and then we will cover A to B. We also know that our 3D box is going to have a height, and in this case here we haven't given a height, so we're just going to assume the height. I'm going to make it about 80. Right, so from A to D, we said it was 59,96. And from A to B, we said it was 60. Right, there we go. I'm just going to clean it up a little. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to make our asymmetric box.
and once you've done that we can now start plotting our points please remember we do work with center lines and we do need to find the actual center line or the center of our shape not the box all right there's a clear difference the center of the box will not give me the center of my shape I've gone ahead and bisected an angle and simply drop the perpendicular line from this point down which is also bisecting this angle here to give me that intersection point that is in fact the center of my object so I'd like to go and use some center lines and I'll put, plot the points needed to find my center line or my center of my object right now we need to take all this information and put it across on this side over here I'm going to be including the other side of um, this box so we can have a little bit of a a view of the other side of this box as well Right. let's transfer this information that I have over here so remember we said a has been given to the right of a is D so I'm going to take D and plot D over here and to the left of a will be B and the only other option that we have for this corner at the back here must be C between line a or point a and B I haven't got any other points except for the fact that I have a triangular corner on A and a triangular corner on B which means this entire line would therefore be a solid line I now have to find the third corner to which A and B is joined lucky for me this is an equilateral triangle and therefore the point from C to the third corner is equal to the third corner to point D which is eventually going to be pointing out the midpoint on line CD remember that point there is between point C and D therefore that point there must be between point C and D on my 3D shape as well right so now I just go and use my I have got my center line SolidWorks so kindly points out our midpoint I'm going to go ahead and draw a center line across that way there and for me to find this center line going through the middle of my object I simply measure from point A to where it intersects with my line AD from my point A to this point over here In this case, that will be my measurement, and I want to ensure that measurement falls on my line AD as it does over here. Right. 
there we go. And I'd also have to draw a center line going through that point over there. At 30 degrees, please remember that. It will have to be at 30 degrees as this is an isometric drawing. Right, we're just going to clean it up a little bit. And we want to make sure that our center lines are actually breaking the outside of the shape. Alright, now I manage to plot the actual center of my object. You will clearly see that it's clearly not the center of my box, which is correct. I've already started drawing my final line, line AB, on the actual 3D shape or the box. And I have now found the third corner which happens to fall on the center line on the opposite side of the box. So there we have it. Falls on the opposite side of the box. Right. Now to do yourself a favor, this is in fact the prism. So we're all going to take this line and this line and change them to final lines. I'd like to have that as a hidden detail line because that will obviously not be seen. And I'd need to draw a line from that third corner straight up till it hits the top. And I'm going to let it pass through that point so that I can guarantee a straight line. Right, you'll note that at the top surface over here, I have one, two, three points, which I'd also have to join. There we go. Now remember, if the, the, the base down the bottom has its own center lines, and the base at the top has its own center lines, once I join the two bases with lines in between, forming a prism, I'd have to have a center line running through the middle of this prism as well. So I'm going to simply go ahead and project with my construction line, straight up to that point over there so that I can find the center of this line over here just like I did down the bottom here. I'm then going to go ahead and select what I have over here. In my case I can simply copy from this point to the existing point over there to find my existing center lines and also like I said, the base at the bottom has its own center lines, the base at the top has its own center lines. Therefore, I would have a center line going straight through the middle of my shape as well. I'm going to extend this one slightly. And there we have it. Now remember, like I said, the center lines for my bottom base and the center lines for my top base are there because they are two separate bases. But the moment I join these bases to form a prism, I have to include one more center line that goes through the middle of both these bases. If I had to erase all my construction lines, I will be left with the final product, which is a triangular prism. Right, I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you'd like, you could always uh, skip back a couple of moments, replay the video, and um, I hope this was as helpful as um, 
I couldn't make it. Thank you very much.